Hey, Mel. It's running. Camera's on? Camera's on. All right. Drive before we die. Oh, good Lord. I wasn't even on my seat properly. So here we are at the bar. I, I thought I'd just open up with a limerick. I don't know. This is the page we have wound up on. <clears throat> there was a young man from Berlin whose tool was the size of a pin. Said his girl with a laugh as she fondled that shaft. Well, this won't be much of a sin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the limericks always coming through for us. Not really. Um, it could appear like a regular episode. Very much like a re regular episode. However, but there's a, something different on the bar. We're drinking a lot more. Yeah, we're going for it. Um, we've gone back and forth on this a number of times. Um, not really back and forth, but we've mentioned it a few times about... Glass The shape of a glass and the way it contributes to the nose of a whiskey. So um, this is, and now I don't have the traditional scotch drinking vessel, which I think is the, the quaich, um, which is a shared bowl that you pass around right. with two little handles on it. And it's more like a, almost like a cat's water dish. Okay. And you pass it around. So I don't, we'll do that a different time. What we have today are the Glen Cairn glasses. Which we have mentioned several times. Which are, which is the, the fancy schmancy way to drink whiskey at the club. With the gentleman in the armchairs. Leather chair. Yeah. Cigar going. Yep. And fireplace. Right. Maybe a sweater. Or a vest. Um, but there's... The way it was devised, this glass, is it allows the whiskey to sort of open up a little bit at the bottom, then, then push it back together and begin to open up again at the top. The idea being that you're really going to pick up a lot of the notes okay. on the nose versus the, the open glass where it just sort I of I see all this time goes. around we have something slightly more fancy than we used to. Yeah, and so uh, these were just... Um, Birthday gifts from my wife to me, who um, was hopeful we'd get them on camera. Real crystal, people. Real yeah. crystal. Yeah. I think this is how you would tell her. Right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we have to do this thing. And we got to get a tune out of it. Yeah. But we're not going to do that. No. Yeah. We're going to talk about the nose um, and if we're picking up more notes on the Glen Cairn glass versus the traditional open glass. So I'm going to I'll throw this out. Quite frankly, a glass is a glass to me. So I'm going to say, you know what, you've got your fancy glasses, mm -hmm. prove this to yeah. me that there's a difference. Yep. I've never done this. All right. I've certainly been places where the whiskey is served in the fancy schmancy yeah, glass. Yeah, no, and I yeah. know I've had a, had a glass yeah. or two here out yeah. of those glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I could never say if you were to do the same drink in both glasses, I've told, had a difference. Yeah, again, it's not a taste difference. Nope. It's a nosing difference. Yes. Yep. We're expanding and containing and then releasing, yes. whereas here it's just released. Yes. Yep. So, in your tradition of not paying attention, yep. do you have any guess as to which whiskey I might have picked for this? What distillery might I pick that we can really do some nose work? Do you have any thoughts? The, I would the, say the crew is wrong. Odd bank. So you are on the right track. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say if you were going to do it, it had to be something with a little bit of smoke and a little bit of heat mm -hmm. to have some traditional smells that you yeah. would get from a traditional scotch that truly invokes that on the moors. Right. <laughs> it, it, going for the drink. Yeah. It has to be. For this exercise, I felt it needed to have something that was noticeably on your nose in the regular glass to see if it intensifies in the Glen Cairn. Okay. All right. So I happen to have a bottle of. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lagavulin. Yeah. So this is a bottle that we opened. This is the um, the double matured. I recall really enjoying this. But the, we have not had this on the show, though. Oh, no, yes. Did we? Yeah. All right. I'll have to look through the Last season. Maybe the, maybe all, maybe... 43% uh, alcohol. So this really should be... Yeah. I must have enjoyed it. Then. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> so we're going to... Okay. 
We're gonna just put a little bit in the glass. Now, we're drinking these though, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that this is not some sort of rubbish that you gave put back into the bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta. We're gonna funnel it right back into the bottle. Okay. Good luck with that. So, I just want. We're gonna start with the uh, the wide glass. Do a nose. We're not gonna taste till nope. afterwards. I've got it. Do a nose. Put it down, and then we'll do the Glencairn. Okay. Yep. Just a nosing. That's like smelling a bottle of medicine. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. But you can tell. There's there's definitely some there's something to it. Yeah. It's not something that would be like, okay, yeah. this is gonna be And now the Glen Cairn glass, the idea is being is we've contained a lot of this. Ooh, okay. It it's pushed together. Yeah. Uh, so for the fans out there, for honest opinion, if you have the two glasses side by side and you step out of one and you step out of the other, one of them has a distinct advantage if you're looking for smell or the notes on the nose. Yep. And that glass would be hands down this one. The Glencairn? The Glencairn. It, it, it compresses it all. It has that moment of release and then it just gets pushed back together. And so it is much more vivid in this. Now you can smell, yeah, no doubts, right. And it's got the same smell. However, what you get from the Glencairn glass is a lot more yeah. volume. Yeah. You can really yeah. go, oh, okay, I can smell that. That's not just a smell. It's I like the, the nosing has been cut with something. And in this case, it's been cut with oxygen. Yes. Yeah. And so we're just we're just getting more oxygen, so it's spreading out more. And here we're just keeping it in tight. So back to the original point of it, that we have never done this before. I can now categorically say yeah. the glass changes the nosing. And so what we have for a, a whiskey, right, is the no well the color, the nose, right, yeah. the front, the middle, and the back. Right, depending you know, depending on the whiskey, and you'll find more flavors, and sometimes you won't really find a middle. But the nose is going to be a part of every tasting, and this glass has has won people's minds in the in the Scotch world, um, and in the bourbon world actually, because um, we've I don't know if you were there, but I've been to uh, in, in, New, you, Orleans. New Orleans, right? Yeah. We went to Dicky Betts. Dicky, Dicky, something. That was the name of my Yeah, name? something. And and big bourbon restaurant. Oh, it was, it was huge. And uh, we, we we have their menu here. And uh, but again, they use the Glen. That's right, they did. They right. Did. That's For, right. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And we we actually tried tried a couple couple yeah. down there. It was yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah. So the glass does matter, um, not to the taste, but to the nose. To the nose. Yeah. Which is which. That's what one thing we should definitely freaking say. The yeah. taste does not change from the glass. Right. It's the same liquid. It's the, the notes, the smell, yeah. the notes that you get yeah. off through your nasal uh, yeah. properties to be able to say, oh, ooh, okay. Yeah. Which to me is rather interesting in the sense that I would never have thought a class right. would make much difference. Right, but the idea of like, why is a whiskey important to you, right? And if you are um, for the, the sentimental, the, the, uh, the financial, all the different reasons you might have some value for a whiskey, right? The nosing nose is, is part of that experience. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. Like I said, it's very interesting to think that the glass makes a difference, but it does make a difference. Yeah, in that one element of, yeah. of the taste. And I would like to yeah. say at some stage, not today, but at some stage we try this with something slightly, maybe a space side, or maybe something that doesn't oh. have the it's heavier notes to yeah. begin with and see what happens. Oh, you're thinking already? All right, that's great. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it this glass. Oh, gosh, that is so good. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. Isn't that smooth? And then that smoke exhale? Yeah. Are we showing? I'm going to have to look at the videos. I don't remember doing this one. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so glasses matter. Okay. And we're going to drink all this, but we're going to let you go here um, with, um, again, we're, we're transitioning from the cheers to the, the toasts, the, uh, the curses. Maybe we'll find a, uh, 
Uh, really, we're just a running Romanian out. curse. We're just running out of shades. <laughs> we're trying your, to fend this out. <laughs> may your glasses always be broken and your bottles always be lost and empty. Right? It'd be a terrible cheers. Yeah. Uh, so in Ireland, uh, sometimes they'll say um, when they're drinking, um, <clears throat> you always have a clean shirt. A clear conscience and enough coins in your pocket to buy a pint, or in this case, a glass. Cheers, Cheers y'all. Glasses matter. Glasses matter. That was quite surprising. I never would have said that glass matters. Yep. 